Ah, oh, there you are. How are you? Hey, Johnny. How you doing? How are you? Uh, I'm doing okay. How are you doing? When we last saw each other, it was sort of the beginning of a really um, turbulent and um, challenging Phil period. I mean, the only way to say it is really challenging Phil period. We pretend that everything is predictable. Like, we, we live these, my kids are going to school at nine, I'm dropping my, my mat, you know, all these things that, that culture and society give us. And we pretend that everything's, you know, that, that everything is predictable, that there is the, these patterns to everything. And, and, not, and we, it's not, we know it's not. We know that anything can happen across the road. There's, and, and the key is to actually accept that anything, anything good, bad, ugly, neutral can happen and, and be okay with that. And that's um, hard. I think that we live our lives um, trying to not think of the bad things. Uh, and and I, think, I think this is one reason why I, uh, um, I'm, I'm not considered the most sociable person, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I, can, I can drown some, uh, 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 some conversations uh, that people are having uh, <laughs> by, by bringing up stuff that everybody else just doesn't want to think about, you know? Like that imminent demise or, or, or just, just the precarious nature of our lives. Like I was, I was thinking, uh, I, I was thinking the other the other day that, um, you know, how is somebody supposed to get, let's say, a good night's sleep or or you know a rest when they're going to be tortured the next day, you know, and and, and but but that's really where we are. Uh, that's where we where we are. Okay, and it's not the next day, but you know, I mean, as we speak right now, there are. I'm sorry, I'm I'm in a I'm in a bad mood. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. No, I like this. Is good. This is. <laughs> I've been in a bad mood for um, about a year. Uh, it's it's not been a good year for me either. Um, but uh, you know, I think that that could be said about a lot of people. Uh, um, you know, I've got some family members that have been in and out of hospitals as well. Um, you know, I've got some. You know junk going on with me and 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 we are living in this this covid stuff right now where you know it it, it it takes an effort not to think about this but there are thousands of people right now in hospitals that have uh tubes down their throat and are suffering horribly and that will probably be the last thing that they experience before they die. And, uh, and, and, and that's what waits for us. That's what waits for us. Maybe it's not a tube. Maybe we'll be lucky enough uh, to be hit by a train. Uh, but, uh, you know, we've, we've got horrible torture in our future. And, and for people to just, uh, people don't want to think about that for obvious reasons. And uh, you got some depressive people that actually can't keep that thought out of their mind. Uh, and, you know, that, that kind of explains me. <laughs> Being able to um, compartmentalize in a way that's honest. I do that. uh, we don't have a depressing talk. I mean, like, so, so I mean, I, I, I want to think that this whole COVID thing is a wake-up call. I mean, we want to talk about my, the film and, and, and hopefully as well, but I mean, I mean I'm mean, i trying to spin it that way. I'm trying to spin that, that, that this COVID thing is a wake-up call. I mean, and, and I guess in, in thematically for the film, I mean, we talked about, I mean, in, in this weird way, some of the things that we're now really seeing. And as a scientist, as a member of the scientific community, you must be horrified by some of this stuff. Tell me about that and then, can you are you spinning this is this is this a wake-up call can we learn from this can we can this help us human uh, beings uh, i mean you know i, I you know it, it, it's weird i mean if you'd asked me 10 years ago 20 years ago 30 years ago um you know what is the uh thing that uh uh you think what is the scariest thing that uh humanity is going to face uh, I would have said at any of those times, uh, uh, a, a plague. 
um, you know, because it's it's just you you look at history and uh, you see plenty of examples. It's not like it's not going to happen. It's going to happen. Uh, so um, you know, if 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 anything, uh, you know, this is this is pretty horrible, but it's not as horrible as it could be. And so if this serves as a wake up call for um, societies to get ready and prepared and to understand, uh, then you know, that's, that's the only way that I can think of, of spinning this to the positive. I, I remember my son when he was quite young, I don't remember exactly what age, but I mean, that was his biggest fear, like, like, like this existential crisis. And, and I remember thinking that that there were lots of people who were talking about, FM talked about it, that, we, that there are all these things that we will have to prepare for and these are the, the things. And so the fact that we haven't, the fact that we've put money in arms and armies and nuclear weapons and, 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 and all sorts of things that are, I don't think are, should be our priority. I'm hopeful that that will, also that, that, that science has also been relegated that half this country or half a lot of countries probably, I don't want to just pick out this country, you know, aren't looking at data or aren't looking at um, people in the scientific community with hopefully the, 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 the sorts of information and knowledge that they can provide. So, I mean, that's my spin in terms of positivity. I mean, how's the, how's brain preservation, how's the brain preservation going? Yeah, I mean, uh, okay. So um, I was I was thinking about um, uh, we we've known each other for quite a while, actually. It's yeah, <laughs> it's not. Yeah, no, it's funny. I, I have to say, if there's a video of me, it's it's one that you made. <laughs> well, there's there's some others too. There's definitely some. Others. Well, if there's a good video of me, then it's one that you. Made. Okay, well, thank you. That's good. <laughs> uh, 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 but I was I was thinking, you know, it's. Um, uh, so the the Galactic Public Archives uh, videos, you know, uh, I mean, I was I was looking at one uh, a little while ago and and thinking, um, you know, there I am talking about, uh, you know, I I think somebody's going to win the prize, I uh, you know we're going to finally have demonstrated proof that brain preservation can be uh, can be achieved. Uh, and that the scientific community will um, uh, will look at the, the hard evidence and say, "Wow, yes, of course we can preserve brains." And now, what do we do? And uh, all that has happened, and uh, it's deafening silence. I have to say, um, you know, for the most part, it's deafening silence because uh, not only has the prize been won, and it's been won by a technique that is uh, that didn't just meet the prize requirements of preserving the connectome, but it preserves so much molecular information. It's just overwhelmingly a robust, good technique that comes out of the neuroscience community. Uh, I have talked to hundreds of neuroscientists and uh, almost without exception, they say, given all of our current uh, uh, understanding of how memory is encoded in the brain, this is almost certainly preserving uh, all the memories, uh, the essence of who we are. And yet, uh, this does not equate into um, a, a push for a medical procedure. In fact, it doesn't even equate for a, uh, an honest answer to a reporter when a reporter calls you up and says, hey, is this you know, brain preservation guy as kooky as he as he seems, you know, when 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 put on the spot, uh, they they won't tell me they they won't apparently they won't say what they say in private. <laughs> that well, yes, this this works. Uh, they'll say, gee, it's uh, you know, it's we don't know anything about how the brain works, and therefore, how could we possibly? be talking about preserving brains or whether they can be uploaded in the future. Uh, well, the uploading thing, I mean, you always thought that the uploading thing was going to be a stretch for somebody to say that that, that piece. I mean, that was always going to be, especially from, an, from somebody, in the, somebody that you want in the neuroscience, that they, they, they were going to have a problem with that piece. But the, the earlier piece was the one that was going to be, right? You can't disconnect the two. And I think that's the problem. So I was going to ask you this because, um, 
so I watched I, I watched the uh, your movie. Thank you. Uh, it was not what I expected. Okay, and uh, <laughs> I told you it wasn't going to be what you expected. You, you, you tried to warn me. You tried to warn me, but um, uh, uh, but I, I, I have no issues with it because I came off as a big skeptic, which is you know that's. <laughs> You became you came up as what? <laughs> You're uh, one part in the uh, it, 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 one one part in the movie. Um, uh, you had you got done interviewing me on something, and I was saying, well, you know, whatever they're talking about couldn't happen possibly, uh, uh, you know, with today's technology. And I was like, yes, thank you, thank you, Johnny. I, I definitely <laughs> I didn't use anyone out of context except for Aubrey <laughs> slightly. That was the only person. I used out of context. I wasn't going to do that. I didn't want to do that. I mean, obviously, I was, yeah, anyway. But, but, yes, I didn't but then, I don't know if it was directly after me or it was after somebody else, but then you said, oh, you can never get a scientist to say what you want them to say. <laughs> it was actually after, it's actually after Aubrey. It is actually after. Okay. It wasn't after. Yeah. It was not <laughs> but, yeah. but, but, but in any case, I was, um, I, I was, I was thinking, though, that um, so, um, uh, I don't have to worry about any spoilers because you're going to cut these out anyway. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I think so. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, it, it was it was interesting to me that uh, you um, took this this early revival as a centerpiece of the movie because uh, you know fr from my perspective and you. You got this correctly. Uh, from my perspective, uh, early revival is not going is not in the cards, and 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 we're we're talking about uh, revival in a hundred years, two hundred years, three hundred years. Uh, uh, it it is a really really difficult to revive somebody, and uh, uh, and and I think that the way that any of these revivals work will be lined up with it. Uh, and so I was, I was wondering if it's, if it's so, um, it, it's like it can't be compelling if it's not in the next decade or something. It's like, it, like you were trying to frame this movie and you were, you, maybe you were thinking, look, it, it, unless he gets revived, or at least the possibility of revival in the here and now, then it's not compelling. Well, it's not that. I mean, I, I think part of it is kind of the part of the problem that you're having is like, we, 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 we there's an immediacy. The, 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 the problems that we have, it's the sort of what I was telling you initially, like we pretend that everything's predictable and we know that, our kids are here and our wives are there and work is here and all of these times and this is when I get off work and this is when I have a drink. I mean, all these things. But all of it is, and because we don't want to think too far ahead about our impending death and the, how did you put it, the tubes down the, the throat and the, the torch. We don't want to think about that. So, so we, we put it off. But in order to make something compelling, or in it, you have to put it, make it in the here and now. And I think you're right. Like, a reporter doesn't just want to hear you can preserve the brain. It's, it's like, I'm going to put a pickle in the fridge. They don't just want to hear about that. They want to hear about, well, what does that mean? And I think, you, I think you always knew that you were going to have people in the scientific community not, you know, not make that direct connection in any sort of way that was going to be robust, robust in terms of what you've done. And I think... Part of that is the very nature of the business that you're in, you know, where everyone's kind of worried. And, and part of it's also hu human nature that we, you know, it's, if it's at 300 years and there's so much stuff that we have to do, how can we say it categorically? It's another one of those sort of leaps that you're taking. Because I, 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 think that, I think that that's, um, uh, that's where people are coming from this. Uh, you know, there's, there's uh, uh, you know, if you break this into pieces for, you know, for scientists, if you break this in for, uh, into pieces and uh, you abstractly say, okay, can we preserve a brain? Yes, you put that aside and ask them, you know, a different scientist, a different question. Do we know enough about the brain to really think that uh, at some point, theoretically, mind uploading would be possible? Yes. You know, are you, uh, you know, different scientists on a different occasion would an, would an upload 
uh, uh, be, be you even, right? Uh, would it, uh, is there some magical thing that is being lost? Uh, you know, is it possible to have consciousness in, uh, in an artificial substrate? Uh, you know, if, if you ask uh, an, an, another scientist under another uh, circumstance, you know, um, uh, where do you think humanity is going in hundreds and hundreds of years? Uh, you know, they might very well say, well, I think that humanity is going to be uploaded. Uh, we're going to develop those technologies. And yet, if you, if you string all those together and say, uh, we have a brain preservation technology today that people agree uh, is preserving what uh, neuroscientists uh, agree uh, 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 encodes memory, uh, and and you know hundreds of years from now we're going to have the technology to upload those people. Uh, and all of a sudden, uh, it's like people's minds break, and you get uh, you get people like, uh, for example. Uh, you get, um, you know, I've, I've talked to some neuroscientists where uh, they, uh, you know, I, I have read from their books that say, to them, <laughs> that say, you know, here is what you're saying that how memory is encoded in the brain. And all of a sudden they will back off of that. They will back off of their own <laughs> research because it is so uh, uh, unpalatable to think that uh, we have the technology today to get to 300 years from now. I, I have talked to people like here, I'll, I'll name Michael Sharmer, okay? Love the guy, fantastic uh, um, uh, skeptic. Uh, I love everything that he does. And I, I hate to say it, I think I, I broke him or something because uh, the, the argument that he has written in his book and has given uh, at multiple um, uh, talks that he's given at this point is that uh, the brain preservation stuff won't work and the mind uploading won't work because there's a non-material substance that can't be transmitted to a copy. It would just be a copy. And I'm like, wow, Michael Shermer, I've turned him into a non-materialist. Uh, should I consider that a success? <laughs> <laughs> I think I should. <laughs> I think you should, you've converted, you've, con you, 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 you've won't debate me on it in public, so there you go. <laughs> you won't debate you, so I think that we have to, we should have a call out, like Michael Schoen should debate. I tried to call him out on Twitter, you know? <laughs> and, well, we need, look, you know, the thing that really is really interesting, and I was really reticent, and I, I knew you wouldn't have seen it, because I don't, I don't think you watch much TV, but, but you have to upload the show on Amazon. Oh, I you saw it, I watched it, somebody recommended it, I've seen the entire season. Oh, good, what did you think? <laughs> I like it. I like it. I think that I liked it too. And I, I was prepared not. I thought it was really brilliantly well done. And, it, you know, I was, I was kind of jealous, actually, to be honest. Like, I think, I think they did a really good job. I mean, yeah, big because they, they, there, yeah. I'm sorry? <laughs> they had a big budget, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they had, they had a tremendous budget. I mean, and it's the guy, one of the producers from Parks. I mean, he did a really brilliant job. I mean, it was really well written. I mean, it's, you know, it's, a, I mean, it's, it's funny. Funny. Yeah. The technology is certainly not, uh, I, I love how they upload people. I, I <laughs> yeah, it was brilliant. And, but the head, when the heads were, were, were little spoilers, <laughs> that was absolutely brilliant. You know, I, it's accurate. I, it's, it's the most accurate method of mind uploading that I've seen to date <laughs> in any science fiction. No, I, I agree. I thought it was tremendous, but I, I wondered, I was, I was sure that you wouldn't have seen it, but I'm really pleased you did. Uh, Robert, uh, Robert McIntyre suggested I, I see it. Oh, he did. Uh, okay, okay. well, if, he's, if he thinks I should see it, I should see it. He, know, he knows you. So, I mean, well, in keeping with that, because, and we've talked about this, but I do think, I, I think it is really interesting. Like, so if you were designing your, your, um, your, um, environment, I don't want to call it utopia, I don't want to call it heaven, I don't want to call it any of those things. Your upload, your upload environment for your transition, for your intermediary period before the, the, next, the next journey. What does it look like? What does it feel like? What's there? Who's there? Yeah, I mean, I think, I, I, I think one of the problems with any of these things is that, um, uh, and this is, this is throughout any science fiction, uh, you know, if you if you develop one set of technology, uh, it's uh, the ramifications of the society that has that technology would filter into all sorts of other things. So, 
you know, we wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't need antidepressants. Uh, you would have a, a knob that you could turn, right? Uh, yeah. uh, you, you, uh, you know, if you're exploring the idea of, of uh, erasing somebody's memory and, and manipulating somebody's memory, you could share memories. The idea of, uh, of personal identity would start to get blurred. So, I mean, I, I, I think that the, the idea that this would be, it's a corny show, right? The idea that this would be a hotel, essentially, that, uh, that people would spend their time enjoying life, uh, that's, that's missing it. It's kind of like, it's kind of like a, a, a caveman trying to imagine what the future would be, and they'd say, oh, wow, we'd have really good spears. Uh, <laughs> no, but, yeah, but that's why I said because and I think I think you're right but I imagine that in in a transitional element like and I think this is actually important because it does remind me of the conversation that I had when we were talking about informed consent like what would be all the nightmare scenarios like so I, I'd imagine that at a time where brain preservation is accept, accepted and there's all sorts of service providers and so on and so forth but, will help you with various things, that a service provider will be somebody that in that period where you're you know, not going full up, where you're gonna be in this transitional world, you're gonna have things that may be familiar or you're like, or you can do things or your consciousness can fly like a bird over the Zambezi River and you know, with your children or nymphs, I don't know, whatever it is. But I can imagine something like that, 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 that which you can have input. And, I, and again, because you really did scare me with your whole informed consent of the sorts of things that could happen, I would want, if I was going to do it, like, okay, but in the wake up, these are some of the things I would like, like this is, so let's, so I'm trying to spin it so you can give me, so we, we can utilize your fertile imagination for your uploading. <laughs> so what's this little environment that's going to make you feel at home, but you're going to get to utilize maybe the, the, these, these differing consciousnesses that you can tap into, but have some deli at the same time. I would like to think that uh, when I imagine this stuff, uh, I do not imagine living in some kind of uh, uh, trapped virtual environment. Uh, that would be a, that would be one of the nightmare scenarios uh, for me. Um, you know, I would want a, um, uh, a, a to be able to go between robotic bodies uh, to see the sites of the solar system. Uh, to um, uh, to participate in uh, the advanced uh, uh, science and technology of the future, uh, you know, I would I would want to be a a full fledged member of that society. And I don't I don't think you know there's a um, uh, there's an argument that um, uh, that people's um, uh, skills would be so out of date that the best that you could do is have them in a the equivalent of a, a zoo or a retirement home or something. But I don't buy that at all because um, uh, you know we we have children nowadays and they're born not uh, not knowing anything, and uh, we we teach them uh, and they become full members of society, and uh, uh, and. It, the the only reason why beyond a certain age uh, people are essentially put in um, in homes uh, is because the biology of the brain breaks down and they can't absorb knowledge like a young person does, uh, or they're uh, you know they're physically frail so they can't do that. All of that's going to be wiped out. So there's no reason, at least in my mind, there's no reason whatsoever why uh, in a, 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 a brain preserved person that is revived by mind uploading in the future is not going to become a full fledged member of whatever society that is. And that's my, uh, that's what I want. I, I don't have this conception of, uh, of what, uh, you know, the afterlife is going to be in a resort. My conception is I'm gonna get back with my life. 
uh, and experience life as somebody in the 2300s. <laughs> I mean, I, I, no, I'm, I'm with you. I mean, I, I feel the same way. And I kind of, as you were describing it, it felt like the sort of Superman in the cave, that you get this sort of like you arrive and you put in the various things and you get like, this is what's happened. This is, this is, and this, and you begin to learn the language, you begin to learn the culture, you begin to, to do that. I mean, that, but as long as I could. I want to be a child again. That's, that's what I want. I want to be a child again. Uh, in that future society. Uh, I, I want to, I, I don't, uh, it, it's, it's kind of like asking a five-year-old what they want to be uh, when they grow up. I, I don't know what I want to be when I grow up uh, because I can't hardly even imagine growing up <laughs> uh, from that perspective. That's who I want to be in that society. I, yeah, want, I, mean, I want the full opportunity. Because we're hearing it even now. Um, we're hearing it more and more. I mean, the informed consent as it applies to so many things. But tell me the, the hurdles as you see them. I mean, obviously, we've got this cultural one, which is a big one, you know, the scientific community. But, you know, because I'm going to lose this track and it is jumping around a bit. But I think, and again, you can put this, and I don't know if it'll buy you anything, but I do think for it to shift it, maybe it isn't going to be a science thing i mean look all of this is almost cultural it is like even the arguments that you're they're not scientific arguments that you're getting back from these scientists they're more cultural they're more um, moral i mean if, if that's the right word and so maybe it is a more sort of cultural shift in like being being friends now with me because i make films maybe that's no but you want to don't want to be friends with me you want to be friends with the guy who made upload you know that's who you really want to be friends with but I'm, I'm half being flipped, but I'm, but, I'm, but I'm not. I think you're absolutely right that this is, a, a, uh, this is not a scientific battle at this point. Um, I think that, uh, I, I, I will say this, and I, 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 I think that, uh, that 10 years ago, this really was a scientific battle. Uh, if the, um, and maybe I'm deluding myself, I, maybe I'm deluding myself, I, I put that on the table, okay. But, um, you know, I, I, I truly think that you could not have a rational discussion of cryonics, brain preservation, that type of, you know, that idea. You just could not have a rational discussion of that until you had evidence that we had a technique that could preserve uh, those structures in the brain that encode memory and individuality. Uh, now that that is accepted, and accepted is different from well known, okay, so it is accepted from the perspective of anybody, uh, almost everybody from the relevant scientific community that I have shown this data to and walked them through, they agree that it's preserving the structures and the molecules that we think today are encoding uh, memory and that would be required for, um, for uploading. So it's, it's like now that that has occurred, the scientific framework has been set for having a cultural discussion about it. And the cultural discussion is scaring the heck out of me because I don't even know where to start, how to start it. Uh, it's nebulous. It's, um, I, there's, there's, no, there's no good uh, uh, way to hook into it even. It's, it, it, it's like, where do I start? What, what is the argument against it? <laughs> you know? I think part of it is, I mean, I mean, is these debates. I think actually having some of these debates and putting them up and, and talking about them and getting people. Look, I, you know, I, I used to think, I mean, there are so many people now that really are interested in this. I mean, and that, that's a start. Like, and yes, you're going to get lots of kooky people and lots of clever people and lots of everything in between. But I do think that people are concerned and people are thinking about these existential things, you know, in a really interesting way and young people are too i mean it, you know so i do think the more you can have these conversations have some of these conversations in public where they are respectful and communicative and and people can and and then you can get to it and 
and trying to find somebody to moderate these conversations would be really interesting. And I think, I think things like that, and you see it on Twitter, you see it on Reddit, you see it on, on these things, that people aren't, I don't know what the turning point is. I don't know what that thing is where suddenly, okay, well, we really need to emphasize this. Is it, you know, I mean, look, I think, and this is a really dark way, but I do think all these people who are, really dying unnecessarily here in, in, in the world and, and, and alone, which is even scarier, maybe will, you know, not a good consequence. It does make you really think about that life. I mean, I had a couple of people too. I mean, because you can't speak to them and you can't engage with them. It's not, and even if there hasn't been funerals and there haven't been these things either and not in the same way. And I think people will start to think about that a lot more. I mean, it sounds really, <laughs> It's, it's, it's I mean, okay, so I get, I get really angry sometimes, and, and I, I feel like uh, if, if, if people would allow themselves to, uh, to think through what's going to happen, okay, uh, or, or to think through it, maybe what's going to happen to somebody else. So, so I, uh, you know, what, what I think is going to happen to me, okay, what I think is going to happen to me is uh, I think in, uh, all too short of a time. I don't know. Ten years. Who knows? Okay. No, uh, you're, you're young. You're young. You're much younger than me. So you, we got more than ten years. You don't know my situation. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, I hope. No, I hope. Yeah. I, think, I hope you've got a lot more than ten years. Uh, yeah. Me too. Uh, so in any case, um, uh, it, it, this this could be anybody though. Okay. Just lengthen the number of years, shorten the number of years. It doesn't really matter. Uh, uh, what's going to happen is. Uh, you're, 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 you're going to age. I feel like this is obvious, but it is required to, uh, uh, to put this in front of people. Okay. Uh, we, we have loved ones that we've seen that have gone from uh, caretakers, wonderful human beings uh, to um, uh, people that don't recognize us. Uh, people that uh, are emotionally um, uh, uh, uncontrolled, lashing out, um, uh, wonderful, prideful, beautiful people that are reduced to wearing adult diapers and having their children clean them uh, after they've crap themselves day in, day out. Uh, people that, um, uh, that are in horrible pain and they can't get the drugs. I, I, don't tell me, you know I, 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 you know, I hear these doctors that say, oh, well, it's just a matter of pain management. That is bullshit, okay? There are people that I've known that have been crying out in pain for days and they find some way to say, we can't give them pain medication, okay? Um, this, is, this is there waiting for us. This is there waiting for us. A relatively slow decline into torturous, torturous death with a big heap of uh, losing all of our self-respect and, and, and pieces of our soul being ripped out as well. And, and then uh, we die. And, 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 and by the time we die, we're probably happy, real happy that we're dead, okay? Really, really happy that we're dead. Now, now uh, I am a, a big advocate of euthanasia, okay? I think that take brain preservation off the table, Everybody should have the option of euthanasia if they're anywhere on this spectrum, okay? Maybe if you're like 25 and just broke up with your girlfriend or something, you should not have an option of euthanasia. But if you're, uh, if you're 70 with a, a diagnosis of, of Alzheimer's, there's no reason society should prevent you from having the most peaceful way of, of, of peacefully dying. There's no reason, okay? So, so you, you put that in front of them and say, okay, I want you to just think about that. And then your urge to say, but 
do we want people to give up? Do we want people to give up on their lives? Okay, you know, we've, we've got people that have, that have struggled through something and they come back and their grandparents and they, uh, they're able to um, uh, give their wisdom to their grandchildren for a few more years. Do we want to really take that away? Um, uh, do we want to, you know, have a society where people give up? And you put into that the idea of scientifically verifiable brain preservation and a real acceptance that eventually society will develop mind uploading technology, uh, the ability to revive them. And, 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 you, and, and, and please explain to me why I, when I'm in that situation, screaming in pain, uh, 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 no promise of, of coming back to, uh, to a life that is worth living, why I should, uh, not only be uh, uh, prevented from uh, uh, euthanasia with brain preservation, but I should be talked out of it or something? I should be illegal? Uh, this, is, this is nonsense. Uh, it, it, is, it, is a, it is morally reprehensible that society has, has somehow locked us away from, uh, from a real solution to uh, what is if we if we look at it bare in the face is absolutely horrific absolutely horrific and this is a real solution to it so I, you know this, this is why i'm frustrated and, and 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 let me be very clear the way things are going uh i am going to be dead in the grave like everybody before well no but i'd be that is I, mean, I mean you can do that but you could do, I mean, you have the technology, you could do this. I mean, no, you could. You I don't could have do the technology. This. No, this is, this is like saying, oh, you know, uh, why don't you just develop a full medical system that can do heart transplants? Uh, well, it, no, but, I mean, but, but in, okay, so, but you, but I, if I recall, if a hospital or if a, a medical institution said yes tomorrow, within 10 years, you could start to do this. This is something you said to me, you could start, that, the preservation aspect of it, right? I mean, you could do that. You've got I mean, 10 years Robert, by your own admission. Robert, Robert uh, started up a company, all right? Um, uh, he, uh, uh, you know, he has the, um, uh, he is building up the infrastructure to make this happen. Uh, uh, but I, I think that, uh, uh, you know, look, I, I wish him the best luck with this, but uh, society, uh, uh, I don't think that this can be done without, uh, without buy society buy-in. Exactly. It, it's it's um, uh, this is emergency medicine. Uh, somebody couldn't uh, develop a heart surgery procedure outside of the uh, outside of the medical system and have that be a long-term proposition that actually works. I, 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 I look at the chronics people. I mean, the chronics people, um, you know, they are, uh, you know, I, I think they have a bad technique, but beyond being having a bad technique, uh, society is just not allowing them to apply even that bad technique in a, uh, in a manner that uh, has uh, a chance of success. We, we've seen this a lot, I mean, in history where, there's a lot of pushback, there's a lot of pushback, it's all stupid, it's all ridiculous, it's witchcraft, it's this, and then there's a turning point. So, as much as, I was actually looking forward to talking to you, one of the few people I've been, you know, because <laughs> yeah. you're so fun, and now we're like, you know, it's just, no, but, but seriously, there is, there, there are, I mean, there are lots of things that did have, I don't know if the same sort of pushback, I mean, this is a big thing, I mean, this isn't, you know, I mean, all the sort of advances have been big things, but I mean, you can't get any bigger than, okay, Here's this thing. It works. We can do it. We can do it on mass. And it, and in a hundred years, hundred and fifty years, two hundred years, you'll be brought back, or you can be brought back. I mean, you don't get any bigger. You don't, you don't get any bigger of a. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is uh, this is huge. And 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 the and the argument that it's. Okay, so the the you know, let me let me let me try to give this the skeptical point of view. Okay, so the the skeptical point of view is uh, uh, 
yes, you can preserve a brain. Uh, you have offered essentially no evidence that you can bring somebody back. We haven't brought back uh, the worm C. elegans. <laughs> uh, we haven't brought back a fruit fly. We haven't brought back a mouse. Uh, uh, you know, the, the, the idea of, of, um, of uploading a brain is, uh, is was so far off that, um, uh, that how can you, uh, how can you conceivably, uh, be saying that it's quote solved and that medical, the medical system should be, uh, uh, should be built around having this uh, this brain preservation option, on the hope that uh, that 300 years from now people will be brought back by mind uploading, where you can't even bring back a fly today. And and, and, and so that's that's the argument. That's the argument. And uh, I I I I look at that and I'm thinking, okay. Uh, uh, I I don't know how to how to how to how, how to argue with that because it's it it seems it seems flawed okay i mean it's like so 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 for example newton uh newton very clearly said what it would take to get into orbit uh and it took hundreds of years uh to actually get into orbit uh and and so would it have been uh proper for skeptical scientist to all throughout that time until Sputnik actually got launched uh, to, uh, to hold out that the possibility of getting into orbit is not something that we should give any credence? No. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't want to side with the skeptics, but I mean, there's credence and then there's, there's action. I mean, you're asking for two things. You're asking for the credence and you're also asking for action. I mean, there's one thing to say, okay, this math seems good. This math seems accurate. I'm not a mathematician or I am a mathematician. And I can, yes, in theory, this, this is accurate. And, and, but it's another thing to say, this seems accurate. Let's start, build, let's start, let's start building a rocket. Let's start, you know, or, or let's start getting a bunch of people that we think are going to be aeronautical engineers to start building a field. I mean, so you, you're not just, so you've got, you're not just, do you know what I mean? There's not, you're not just, here's a, an equation that I think has this implication. So I think, you know, you've got your work cut out for you. Yeah. Uh, and it's a shame. I mean, have there been other things where the, the analogy is closer? I mean, scientifically, where it is, a, like there is a closer analogy, probably a more contemporaneous analogy, where somebody... Well, yeah, I mean, one of, one of the things that uh, uh, that Robert brings up uh, sometimes in his talks is the idea of a um, uh, uh, preserving DNA. Um, that uh, we uh, uh, we we now accept that it is reasonable to preserve DNA samples of uh, whole bunches of species um, on the. Uh, on the possibility that there will be extinctions, and uh, and yet nobody really knows what how to do anything with that DNA. I mean, we're developing the technology, but you know, I mean, if we if we go back forty years, fifty years, we had the technology to preserve DNA, and we did. We started. Right. My understanding is that they started making. Um, uh, uh, I don't know when they started this, but they, they started a long time ago uh, preserving the DNA of different species. Uh, um, uh, and, and I don't think, maybe there was, but I don't think there was pushback saying, hey, we don't know if that DNA is going to be able to be useful, so let's just not do it. Uh. <laughs> yeah, look, I think, you know, the more you talk about it, I mean, it, it's marketing. I mean, look, you've got another issue because you don't want to market. I mean, you, you want to market, but you don't want to market. You feel, there's a part of you that feels like, I'm, I'm a scientist. I shouldn't have to, I shouldn't have, like here, here's this. This is obvious, this is logical. A, me, a, me B, personally, C. okay. Yeah. Me personally, I do, I do not, I, 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 don't, I don't want to market it because, uh, well, let, let's, let's be very straightforward, okay? I mean, uh, this is, um, 
Actually, I, 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 I'm not sure if I have a problem with marketing it, I, actually. I mean, I, I'm not marketing an actual product here. Uh, what I'm marketing is the idea that the medical and scientific community uh, develops uh, brain preservation into a medical procedure that is offered to terminal patients. That's what I'm, that's what I'm asking for. I'm not asking no, for I'm saying there's a duality, but, the, but I, I sense, and it's less than it used to be when I first met you, but there's this, like, there's the, I want people to get it and it's this, but it's not like you, this is almost like you're um, a little burger joint and, but you're going to be McDonald's. Like there's, there's, there's no, this isn't a little burger. This is McDonald's, this is McDonald's on supercharge. You know, this isn't, so it, you can't be reticent. You can't be like, and you're not, you're not now. I mean, you're not in your, you know, in where you're coming from, it, it's then like, well, who's got the most to gain other than humanity in, in its totality? Like, because no, we're living in a capitalist environment. So there are people, because I've been doing some of these interviews and I can't remember who, but there was a philosopher that we need this, 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 this impending doom for us to be creative. This, this, that argument, which you've heard countless times. That might be, I mean, he might be right. Uh, that's a, that's a uh, philosophical um, discussion. Uh, it's it's it should be up to people to make that decision though uh, it is it, it's uh, it, it's not a reason to not develop a medical technique for sure <laughs> uh, and and, uh, uh, and, and I, I do have an issue though with um, uh, with this kind of proud atheist uh, you know that that not only have uh, yeah, let me get this off my chest here, <laughs> okay? Because a lot of my atheist heroes um, uh, have essentially said, uh, uh, you know, the uh, religions have, uh, uh, are, are people going, you know, nuts uh, uh, being, because they're scared of dying. And uh, we are beyond that because we have accepted the inevitability of death and have embraced it and see that it is a good thing and it gives our life purpose and we need to just live for the for today. Uh, and and that 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 sounds like I mean let let me put it in context. That's like that's like saying somebody uh, that's like somebody saying uh, you know uh, uh, mythology said that we could fly. And uh, we've rejected me mythology. There are no angels. There's no Pegasus. Uh, uh, there's no magic flying. Uh, and we are just, and we're actually happy that we're stuck on the ground. We're really, really happy. And, and we shouldn't fly anyway because there's nothing good up there anyway. You know, that is not acceptable uh, from a scientific perspective. Once you understand what death is, and you understand that there's no magical heaven or something like that, the next logical thing is to try to uh, prevent it. And that's what medicine does. <laughs> and this is just another extension of that. And so for, for atheists to all of a sudden come, uh, you know, it's like, okay, we're okay with chemotherapy, we're okay with vaccines, we're okay with all this other stuff, but whoop, whoa, Brain preservation, mind uploading, wow, that's, you know, we have to just accept how death is a good thing. That's, that's complete BS. And I don't, ex I don't see why these, uh, you know, hero atheists uh, uh, of mine are, are, are buying into this. So who, I mean, who else in that, in that, I mean, who else in that community, if you want to call anyone out? Uh, My Michael Shermer is somebody that has definitely uh, made this case in book form. So uh, I, I, I think that this is what Daniel Dennett would say, uh, although Daniel Dennett is a hero of mine and I would love to talk to him directly about this to get his opinions. I think uh, Richard Dawkins would say this. I think Sam Harris would say this. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, unfortunately, I'm just a little uh, guy that doesn't run in these circles. Uh, uh, well, we, well, we're going to change all that. Okay? We're going we're gonna, we're gonna to change look, look, it, 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 it. You know, if there was a way for, um, you know, I, look, I'm all for that, okay? 
you know, if there was a TED talk, I would go and make an absolute fool of myself uh, uh, saying to the world, look, we've got to embrace brain preservation. We've got to embrace it now. Uh, you know, if there was some other method, I, I, I kind of feel like I, I need an argument from the other side to fight against. And I'm not getting an argument anymore. I had the, you know, the, 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 the skeptics were giving a really good argument against cryonics. Just show us that you can preserve a brain, that it's not destroying a brain. It was a concrete argument that I could wrestle to the ground. Okay, there was a, uh, there was a, you know, I could make a prize, I could talk to the right people, we could get it done, and we got it done. You know, give me the next argument to fight against. But I, I kind of feel like everybody is just. Um, the argument uh, is time. There's no That's argument. the argument. That's the argument. The argument is, look, we are, this I will say categorically, um, I, 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 often I, I, I give myself an out, but I'll say that we are so, we want stuff and we want it now. And if Amazon isn't fucking delivering it tomorrow, we're upset. Like everything's about the here and the now. Part of it's the media, part of it's everything's coming at us. Part of it's like, everything seems like it's on steroids. So yeah, 300 years seems like a long time to be like, yeah, okay. But I, you know, I am really intrigued about this idea that, that we, we've been saving you know, DNA for a long time before we had any clue. I think, I think one of the arguments could be that, uh, uh, that uh, it really is, like, like, for example, in your movie, <clears throat> uh, 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 like, like any other movie, okay, uh, not like any other science fiction movie, they can't go into the details of uh, what it would really take. Right, uh, and 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 so uh, from a from a scientific perspective, it is very uh, it, it's very correct to look at the idea of uploading a person's brain and realize that this is just so incredibly beyond today's technology that it is um, it's 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 almost laughable to consider. Uh, you know, it would take uh, a million electron microscopes running in parallel just to get the uh, just to get the connectome of a uh, of, of a human brain, and so and and then to simulate it, we don't have all the all the knowledge. It's just it's it's I I I think that uh, there is this uh, reluctance to uh, to accept that humanity will get to that level. And who knows, humanity may not get to that level. I'm not even arguing that. But, but, uh, uh, but one of the things that could really, uh, uh, that I would love to argue, right? Because I'm a, I'm a connectomics person, right? I mean, you know, the, the, uh, the stuff that I'm, that I'm working on right now uh, is, uh, you know, I've got, uh, I've got a 61 beam, uh, electron microscope, many millions of dollars, that has been uh, bought for our project. Uh, uh, I've developed a technique where uh, that electron microscope can be uh, can be coupled with uh, gas cluster ion milling that can do large scale imaging. This is trying to address the question <laughs> of whether humanity will ever get to that scale. And it's trying to address it in a very concrete manner. We've gone from uh, very small scales to larger scales to larger scales to larger scales. I am trying to, uh, uh, at, a, at a very technological level, show how somebody could be uploaded. 